One of the best ways to successfully grow a service-based business is to attract leads using a lead generation form. However, too many of these forms aren't inspiring or interesting enough to want a prospective client to take action. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can increase lead conversions by up to 40% using Visma's beautiful new lead generation forms. I'm going to walk you through the entire setup process from adding content, creating an animated character, right through to publishing and sharing that form online. So if you're ready, let's make a start. Start off by either setting up an account with Visme or log into your account using the buttons in the top right hand corner of your screen. You'll arrive on the Visme dashboard where you'll see a carousel of suggested templates right at the top. To start building a Visme form, click on the Forms Surveys thumbnail. Now select the type of form you'd like to create. I'm just going to select contact form because I want to walk you through the entire process through to publishing and embedding the completed form on your website. Scroll down to view all the different types of forms under each category. So you have a simple email contact form, a new customer contact form, an event contact form. You can preview a contact form before opening it up by clicking on preview. But for now, I'm just going to open the new client contact form up onto my dashboard. On the left hand side of your page, you'll have a column with two tabs at the top, one for content and one for form styles. On the right hand side is where you can add or remove your animated character. It's worth stressing at this point that although Visme forms with the animated character have been shown to almost double conversion rates, you don't need to have the character at all. They can easily be switched off with one click of a button to leave a very sleek and professional sign up form. I'll be talking about how to customise these characters and adjust the form design in more detail a little later on. Finally, the centre of your screen is where you'll see your form spring to life as you start customising it. At the foot of the page, you'll find the different thumbnails for each separate page of your form. So I have four separate pages on this particular form. If you don't like the order of the pages, you can shuffle them around by holding your cursor down over the page and dragging it into position. If you don't like the current style of your form, you can change it by going to the left hand side column, ensuring that the style tab is selected and then scrolling down to find a style that you do like. Don't worry too much though, because I'll be showing you how to customise your very own brand style as we go through this video. To select a new form style, click on apply at the centre of the thumbnail. So let's have a look at adding and customising your form content. Again, go to the left hand side column and select the content tab. The important thing to mention here is that you can customise everything on your form. So please don't worry if at first glance you notice the font and colours aren't on brand because I'm going to show you exactly how to adjust those in a moment. So starting on the first page or intro, you might want to start by adding your logo. So select the logo element with your cursor and upload your logo from your own device. Once uploaded, you can change the alignment and your logo size. Next, customise the form text. To customise any text, just click on the text box. Now you can go ahead and edit the text. If you don't want to use all of these text boxes, just toggle the corresponding button in the left hand side column to the off position. To edit the style of text, again place your cursor within the text box. Go across to the corresponding text button. Next to the button, you'll see a little pencil icon. So click the pencil to edit the style of your text. And that will bring up an entirely new menu of different editing options. So you can edit the font family, the font size, style, case, alignment and colour. So I'm going to change the colour of this text to black. Incidentally, I don't know if you noticed, 
Let me go back up to the font family and click on this downward arrow. I actually took the time to set up my brand kit in Visme, which makes it incredibly easy for me to select my own brand fonts, which are just here right at the top. Similarly, if I click on the color tab, I can find my own brand colors in this palette right here. Repeat this process as many times as you need for as many text boxes as you have. Don't be afraid to edit the text within a form field or a call to action button. Just click the element with your cursor and on the left hand side you'll notice that a new menu of editing tools will appear. So go ahead and edit the text in exactly the same way as before. Edit the text colour, the background even. You might want to change it for one of your own brand colours. Add an outline to your button. Change the padding, add corner rounding and so on. Now here's a quick Visme tip for you that's going to save you so much time and frustration in the future. So that you don't have to go through this process all over again of adding your own brand styles, changing the colours and so forth, you can save your current style as your own unique brand style. So right at the bottom of this column, when you're finished editing, you'll find a button that says save as new style. So click on that, go up to the top and select add new style and then give your new brand style a memorable name. And that's it. So next time you set up a brand new Visme form, all you need to do is select your brand style to add it to your form. OK, back to the content column. There's no point in having a lead generation form unless you're going to collect the correct data. You can customise each form field, add new ones and delete others according to your needs. To add a new form field, click on Add Field. Click on the correct field and then click Add Field. And then you're prompted to either add it to your current page or add it to a separate page. Clicking over to my second page, you might be wondering how to make some form fields required fields. And it's very simple. Click on the form field and on the right hand side of your screen, you'll find a little form field menu. And right at the bottom, you'll see required field. So if this is something that you want your clients or customers to fill in, make sure there's a little tick in the box. Obviously, to untick it, just click in the box. You might not want to keep all the default form fields. So if you'd rather remove one, click on the form field with your cursor. Go to the left hand column and find the corresponding content tools. And here you can either delete that form field by clicking on the little trash icon or you can click on these three little dots. And this would be my preference. And using this little menu here, click on the hide button just to hide it from view. And that means you can easily reintroduce that form field by clicking on the little hide icon. And there it is again on my form. You can also shuffle the form fields around on each page by going over to the left hand side column again, holding your cursor down over a corresponding form field and then moving it into the right position. Before customers submit their data, you'll need to ensure that you comply with data protection regulations. So before you get to the final page in a template, which is usually the thanks message, go over to the left hand side column and right at the bottom, you'll see a clickable tab called legal consent. So if I click on this drop down menu, I've got the option to add links to my privacy policy and marketing permissions. So make sure you turn both of these buttons to the on position. They will appear on your template underneath the call to action button. You might want to make the text stand out a little bit more by editing the colour of the text. And then add hyperlinks to your own business privacy policy so that you comply with your country's data protection regulations. Ensure that you include the marketing agreement as well so customers can opt in to receiving further marketing emails from you. 
The final page can be customized so that you can send a confirmation message once a form has been submitted. And if you're really smart, place your cursor within the text box and add a hyperlink to a web page or direct clients to a useful piece of content to keep that prospective customer interested. Now let's have a look at editing the fun animated character on your page. There's no doubt they're great fun and will certainly snag a prospect's attention, but you don't have to have one at all. So going over to the right hand side column, just toggle this button to the off position to remove the character altogether. Alternatively, click on adjust form designs to reveal a further menu of options. You can hide the character or display it by clicking on these buttons here. You can also adjust the background of your form. So when it's published, you can display it in card style or in full screen. OK, now let's have a look at customising that animated character. Your character has a separate animation for when it enters a page. The waiting pose, so when it's waiting for your client to take action. And there's an end pose for when your client has submitted the form. So have a little bit of fun and add a celebratory animation. To customise your character, make sure you click on the character tab. Customise any of the presets by clicking on edit and then edit character. Work your way through each of these characteristics. So toggle the gender button to male or female. Select a body style from cool or sleek. Next, customise the skin and eye colours by selecting a colour swatch. Underneath, click on the downward arrow next to head, where you can customise everything from hairstyle, adding facial hair, glasses. If I add these glasses to my character, you'll notice that I can even customise the colour of the lens by selecting one of these shades and then adding my own colour by clicking on the plus icon and then copying and pasting a colour hex code into this box here. So you can make some very precise edits. To collapse a category, just click on the arrow once again and move on to the next one. So from here, customise the character top or shirt, the bottoms, and even the shoes. If I customise an item of clothing to add to my character, what I love about this is I can customise it even further by selecting the colour swatch and adding one of my brand colours. So even my animated character is completely on brand. Once you've finished customising your character, you might want to give it a memorable name. Clicking on the tick to save it and then clicking on save my character. Your own brand characters will appear right at the top here. You can then add this custom character to any of the forms you create in VisMe in the future with just one click. Before moving on to the connect stage, be sure to check your form to see what it looks like on a mobile device. The forms are responsive and mobile friendly, but it's worth just checking the layouts just to be sure. Move on and click on the connect tab. Make sure you collect all the data from your form by connecting it with your favourite email service provider, CRM or spreadsheet. To connect an app with Visme Forms, simply click on the connect button and follow the very simple instructions online. Some apps will need to be synced with Zapier, such as Beehive and Shopify. Visme is constantly updating the available apps, so do check back from time to time if you can't see what you're looking for right now. To this stage, just click on the publish tab one click to publish your Visme form so when you're ready hit the publish button. Congratulations your new form is live as you can see from the top of the page. You might want to give your form a new title or add a description underneath which is entirely optional and here is the fun part you can start collecting leads by either sharing a link to your Visme form on social media via email you could even generate a QR code that links to your form and add it to one of Visme's beautiful business card templates. 
The second option is to embed your form on a website or blog page. So click on the embed tab on the left hand side of your page. You now have three options to choose from. You can create a pop up, which will appear as an overlay at certain times. Use the settings and advanced settings to set timings, frequency and so on. When that's done, simply copy the embed code and paste it into your website. Alternatively, you could embed your Visme form into a web page as I've done with my contact form. So select it to appear between content and then copy and paste the code underneath or embed your form into a sidebar if you have one available. So copy the appropriate code and paste it into your website. Visme does not recommend using a pop-up form for either of these purposes. So don't use a pop-up form if you wish to add it to a blog or a sidebar. Coming soon is a more detailed tutorial about the connect and publish stages. I'll show you exactly how to connect an email service provider and Google Sheets with your Visme form. You'll also learn step-by-step -step how to create a pop-up form and embed it into a website as well as create a sign-up form to place on your blog. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.